Afternoon, guys. We will start with a broadcast section that's got no embargo, followed by an embargo section for 10.30pm tonight. No live tweeting during the broadcast section and use the microphone provided. Darmesh. And good to see you. Can we start off with the latest team news, particularly Mickey van der Ven, Richarlison as well ahead of Fulham? Uh, yeah, they're the only two sort of of interest everyone else sort of, uh, same as last week. So Mickey, um, yeah, nothing too significant. He'll, he'll miss tomorrow, but um, yeah, we're quite confident if recovery goes well with the international break, shouldn't miss uh, too much more. Um, so... Yeah, I think he came off at the right time, to be honest. So, yeah, whilst he misses tomorrow, it's still positive. And uh, Richie trained today, so we'll just see how he pulls up. But if he pulls up OK, we'll be, uh, yeah, probably be available. Uh, from the outside, at least, last week seemed like a statement of victory for Tottenham, given the manner of how you played and the result. What did it do for your belief? What did it do for the belief of your players for the rest of this season? Um, I didn't do anything for my belief, but I think, you know, it kind of helps when... You know, in in I guess in a significant game or in what was you know built up as a significant game, I just, I like the way we handled the whole day. To be honest, the the build up to it, um, you know, it's a difficult venue. Uh, supporters get right behind them. They're they've been you know pretty formidable at home, and you know the fact that I thought we handled the whole day really well. Um, you know, played well, um, stayed really focused. Uh, uh, I thought it was a, a you know another sign of, of growth for us as a team, and um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, players obviously feel good after that, but also understand that you know the reason we got that outcome was because you know they they were really sort of focused on just playing our football. You mentioned growth, then you've you've always talked about how important it is to progress as your number one priority. But if you were to get into the Champions League for next season, would it accelerate that progress and maybe? help you go into a transfer market for another level of player if you're in that competition? Well, uh, yeah, as I think I said last week, that, that just depends how you, you kind of utilise that opportunity. Uh, as I said, just just getting to Champions League or being a participant doesn't guarantee anything bar for, from a few games against some good opposition. You know, it's about using that opportunity for growth. And like you said, whether well, that's in the off-season, but I, I doubt whether our off-season plans in terms of strengthening the team will change markedly from where we where we are now you know we know what we need we know the areas we need to strengthen we know the kind of players and the profiles we need and, and that won't change irrespective of sort of how the season finishes for us because um, like I said for us it's about growth it's not it's not about just having one target and uh, you know uh, those plans are well in place Hi, Ange. Um, if Radu starts tomorrow, that will be his first Spurs start. So I just wondered, wondered how do you feel he compliments Christian Romero <clears throat> at the back when compared to Mickey van der Ven? Yeah, I'll take the suspense out of it. He'll start tomorrow. So. <laughs> just in case. Right. Um, no, look, it's a good opportunity for him. We obviously brought him in with with a view that we're, you know, it was quite evident that we were very short in that area. And, uh, you know, he'd had a good sort of, very good uh, half season at, in Italy and, you know, he's had to be patient for his opportunity, which is not surprising because, you know, Mickey and, and Romero have been outstanding for us and um, with only a game a week, virtually sometimes, not even a game, he's had to be patient. But he's worked hard at training. And as I said to him when we, we signed him, you know, I, I couldn't guarantee him, well, not guarantee him, I, I couldn't tell him when he'd get an opportunity, but he would get an opportunity. And I thought he did well when he came on you know, the other day. Um, it was good that the team was already in good rhythm, even though, you know, the score line was still... I think it's zero zero at the time, but he contributed to sort of the way we finished that game. And you know, he's 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 a pretty self assured young guy. He, you know, he has belief in himself. You know, he's he's got some really good people around him. And yeah, you know, I think he can bring something else to us as a team. He's he's a very very good defender, and um, you know, he's he's very very strong in the duels. And I think we're going to need that tomorrow. And in terms of your opponents tomorrow, Fulham, I mean, what kind of a challenge are you expecting from them? A, a tough one. Um, yeah, you know, particularly there at Craven Cottage, and and Marco's always, you know, whatever team he's got, you know, he has them well organised, and you know they've been scoring some goals as well lately. I think their front three are a threat for sure. Um, so, yeah, you know, there's there's some obvious strengths they've got there, but no different to last week for us. Uh, we 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 understand we we've got to play to our capabilities, but if we do and have that sort of focus we had last week around our football, then we know we're, we're going to be hard to stop. And finally, for me, you've got quite a few players going away on international duty. I mean, what will be 
the sort of general plan for the next couple of weeks from your point of view? I guess not too unusual from from sort of other international um, sort of windows. We won't have uh, many left here, so we'll do our work with them and the rest will have obviously their, their commitments. And, you know, I think when we get back, I think we've got Luton on Saturday. So um, I think most of the boys are back sort of Thursday, Friday that week. So not unusual for us. But, uh, you know, right now the boys are just focused on Fulham tomorrow, as am I, and we'll look at the internationals after that. I am just going to check on the progress of Manor Solomon. Yeah, no real progress. Still, um, you know, he's still in that sort of position of, uh, you know, he's not really comfortable with where he's at. So, um, again, we'll just uh, give him the time he needs to, to, to get to the place he's, he needs to be to, to recover. But, um, yeah, I think yeah, I think the, the medical team's sort of looking for, for some other strategies now. Okay. And... Uh at previous football clubs, you've kind of mentioned a moment maybe when you saw that your the team or the club had really bought into your methods, or everyone did. Have you had that yet at Spurs? And if so, when was it? Well, it's hard to say because I usually talk about that stuff after we've achieved something. So, you know, until you, you can't actually achieve something, it's hard to pick seminal moments because they all could be full storms. So, yeah, what, what's important, like I said, have we progressed? Yes. Uh, have I seen growth, both in individuals and as us as a team collectively? Yeah, have I seen, you know, the, the environment improve? All those things are there, but, you know, when you're looking for sort of key or pivotal moments, it, it's better to reflect on those after you've done something. Yeah, and uh, talking of improvement and progress, you've often spoken about <coughs> Brendan Johnson getting him into the right areas as with all the wingers. How impressed have you been of how much he seems to have taken on board? Yeah, no, he's been great. Um, yeah, I think I said that it's probably for a younger player, it's the hardest sort of uh, area of the pitch to, to kind of, you know, come in and make an impression because you, you're usually only sort of judged by one thing and that is, you know, your sort of goal involvements and everything else in your game doesn't really register. So especially for a young person <laughs> like, like Brennan who's coming to obviously – you know, on, to a big club and, and, you know, with a significant transfer. But I thought he handled it well, you know, at every sort of juncture. He's, uh, he's taken the information on board. He's, he's tried, he's worked really hard in the areas we've asked him to work hard in. He's already got great qualities. That's why we, we bought him here. And, um, you know, he's, he's beginning to get the rewards now. But, you know, that doesn't mean that stops. And <clears throat> that's the beauty, of I guess, for him and, and for all the guys, you know. It's, it's not about sort of being satisfied where you're at and if they keep having that attitude of wanting to improve and um, yeah, that, that's going to make us a stronger team and, and them key contributors. Just wondered, Ange, presumably as from answers you've given before, you would have watched the Champions League games this week. When you watch them, are you thinking where your team is at relative to them? And if so, where do you think Spurs is relative to the quality of these Champions League knockout games? No, not really. I, I just don't think there's any use in that for us right now where we're at. Um, I think the measure for us at the moment is just ourselves, you know, and, and until you get to a place where you feel like, okay, that there are certain things embedded in this team that, you know, are, are there now and, and you're confident they're there, then you can start looking at, okay, well, how would we measure up against, you know, the very best? I mean, <laughs> you get challenged in the Premier League every week. I don't think you need any, any other measure other than that to see your, your kind of progress and, uh, you know, I think the English teams last night all performed outstandingly well. Um, so you, you know, there's there's a real test there, and if you if you pass sort of the Premier League test in that, you're you know competitive and and sort of battling for honours. That probably a good indicator of how you'd be in Europe. But it, it's a different beast as well. And like I said, for me, the current the current measures I'm looking at are all sort of internal. You talked a lot about the team and growth, and you talked about it last week with that Villa game. What are kind of the next areas of growth that you see? For this team, oh, so many, mate. Um, not not that we're sort of, you know, we we got massive gaps, but it, all these things are kind of. Some of them are, you know, you make real advances very very quickly, and that's pleasing. But others are just small, incremental sort of growth. You can only get by sort of experiences as I put them so last week was an experience for us you can't manufacture that at training I can't cultivate that other than sort of preparing the guys for for what's in store when a game is built 
you know, is a significant fixture and you're away from home, how do you handle all that? That's So it's, it's experiences, some of that growth is just having more and more of these experiences together as a group. Some of that growth, like I said, is still around our football. Some of that growth in the individuals themselves, you know, we've, you know, I've loved the improvement we've seen in, in just about our whole team. And, you know, the key of that is for them to continue to, you know, not to sort of plateau at any point, to, to continue to push on. So there's there's many different areas. Have you felt as well an uplift? Because obviously the, after all the injuries, then suddenly, you know, the last few weeks, or gradually, I should say, you know, mm. it feels like you've got that competition. You've got players coming on and making a big difference. Have you felt an uplift in training and, and with players conscious that they really do need to be performing at their best or there's someone else who can replace them? Not in that sense, but it, it, it does give you an uplift in training because, you know, the, the quality of your training increases because, you know, all the players, you know, are available or for the majority are available and that just naturally increases the, the quality, the, the, the competitiveness of your training, you know. It's not it's not like, you know, if when we had the injuries and, you know, we didn't have those players that, training wasn't still very very intense it's just like I said you're able to do things at a, at a high level high quality players get tested um, you know in many different areas so it just helps for, for the general sort of feel of what we're trying to do. I can just finish with George please at the back for this section. <clears throat> Hi Ange, I just wanted to check on team news aside from Mickey and Richarlison, is everyone else in the camp okay? Yeah, from last week, yeah. And um, going back to Raddy Dragasin as well, I mean, obviously you had you know, belief in him, hence why you've signed him, but I guess until, until you see someone sort of go through an experience, you don't know how they'll handle it. Would that 45 minutes at Villa be important for his self-confidence that he can, that he can handle the Premier League? Look, to, to a certain extent, but, you know, like I said, he's not, you know, he, he's, he's, he's got a fair bit of self-belief anyway, and that's why he made the decision to, to sort of come to us, knowing it's, it's, it's a challenge for him to, to get some game time. It's, a, it's the toughest league in the world, you know. I don't think he, he shied away from that. So, um, but every experience you have, like I said before, you know, gives you an opportunity for, for growth. And, you know, it was good to get him some game time last week because I think... If you look post international break, at this stage we've got one midweek game. Likely we'll have a couple more with the way the fixturing is going. So I think it would have been tougher if he hadn't had any game time and we threw him in as we have with other players. I think that's that hasn't worked that well for us. Uh, not, it hasn't worked that well, but it's, it's really tough on players when they haven't played for a long time to then be thrown in. So I think more than any that half hour at least gives him that sort of you know game time he needs at that level. Like I said, he, he's, he, was ex, he was exposed to a very good team, some um, very good opposition, some you know some very good opposition players, and and I think that that'll help him tomorrow, being you know particularly at the beginning of the game. And um, just finally for me, saw a clip this week of you meeting um, Spurs fan Owen Bright again. Um, really lovely moment. In the sort of job you're in, is, is that sort of one of the best things about your job, the fact that you can give so much joy to someone by just sort of being yourself? Yeah, it is, but it's also reciprocal. I get a lot of joy out of it too, mate. You know, it's not every day you walk out in training, somebody runs up and gives you a hug. That's not, it's not the usual uh, greeting I get. So, um, And it wasn't just Owen, you know, there was you know, quite a few of his friends there and um, I walked out and saw a bunch of Spurs supporters buzzing, mate. You know, there's no better feeling. So, you know, as much as, you know, we, we understand that, you know, you know, particularly the players, you know, they're their heroes and the joy they give them, mate, they, we get equal joy out of it, mate, because, um, you know, like I said, it's uh, such a fantastic feeling to to see, um, you know, people who are passionate about their football club and, and you know, how... You know, how much joy it gives them. Um, yeah, it's just a privilege to be in that space. OK, we'll end the broadcast section there. We'll move on to the embargoed section <clears throat> for 10.30pm tonight. Tom?